Welcome to another video. So we have a polynomial problem here from the Harvard MIT math tournament of still 2011. Looks like I've been just going through those problems and picking the ones that I know how to solve. And what we're supposed to do is to find the value of C. Now, C and X must be real numbers. And the condition is that when you compose f by itself, that is, you find f of f of x, we're going to get three distinct real roots. Now, that is where the test is, because the composition is not the problem. It is you being able to find what the value of c would be for this condition to hold. It is super easy and almost impossible. Depends on the situation you find yourself in. Let's get into the video. So some basic knowledge that I have is that when you compose a polynomial with itself, what happens is the degree of the new polynomial is always twice the degree, not twice, uh, the product of the square. Okay, of the degree. For example, if you compose a linear function with a linear function, the new function you get is going to be a linear function because 1 times 1 is 1. If you compose a quadratic with a quadratic, the next, the new function is going to be a quartic, that is degree 4 polynomial. Okay, a cubic function composed with itself will be a ninth degree polynomial. So looking at this, because this is a quadratic, I know that f of f of x is going to be a fourth degree polynomial. And that's where the thinking starts. Whenever you have a fourth degree polynomial, you're expected to have four roots. Now, some of those roots might be real or not, not real, and these are the possible shapes you might get, okay? Since the leading coefficient is positive, we're going to have possible, so possible shapes. The most common is this, something like this. So if you have a polynomial this way, it has four real distinct roots, okay? But that's not what we want. So we know the graph of the, of the function we're going to get is not going to look like this. Another option is you have this. You might have a graph like this. Um, so this actually has two real roots and two imaginary roots. We just don't know where they are. Okay? So these are two real roots. Okay? We might also have a situation like this where the graph is just something like this. No real root. Everything is suspended up there. So it never crosses the x-axis. We might even get one real root, which is going to be a graph like this. Um, okay, if you get a graph like this, there's only one real root. Well, this is a root with a multiplicity of two. Okay? Notice that all the real answers I'm getting are 4, 2, 0. What is this? This is 1, 1, 2, 3. Oh, I'm looking for 3. So the only time you can get 3 roots is if you're going to get 1 combined with 2. So we're going to have a situation where there is a bounce off of the x-axis and there is an intersection somewhere. That's when you can get three. So maybe a possibility of, where will there be a bounce? So we might get something like this. Uh, this one, maybe a bounce like this. Yeah, something like that. So here you got one, a bounce, and another one. So this must be the graph of f of f of x. So, now that I've shown you what I'm looking for, this guy, I have to go here and say, let y be f of x, so that f of f of x 
is the same thing as f of y. But we know that f of anything is anything squared plus 6 anything plus c. So we know that f of y will be equal to y squared plus 6y plus c. So what we want to do, remember, the purpose of this is to find the value of c for which this is going to have exactly three distinct roots. So when we solve this quadratic, we're not solving for x yet. We're solving for y, but let's see what we get. When we solve for this, this is so solving, so we have y squared plus 6y plus c equals 0 implies that y must be equal to, well, this cannot be, we can't factor it, we don't even know what c is, so we're just going to use the quadratic formula to solve this equation, okay? And it's going to help us find y in terms of c, and then we can find something to do with it. So we're going to say that y equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that's going to be minus 4 times c, all over 2a, that's just 2. Okay, now notice how you can factor out 4 here. If you factor out 4 from here, you're going to get minus 6 plus or minus um, 2, right? The square root of 4 will be 2, and you have 9 minus c inside, and there's still going to be a 2 under. But that 2 will cancel the 2 that you factor out from this. So you have your y. Um, let's write it here. y will be equal to minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus c. That's what our y is going to be. So what do we mean? If f of f of x, which is f of y, is ever equal to 0, it means that f of x must be equal to this. Otherwise, it cannot be equal to 0. We've shown it because y is f of x. So we say, but we want the values of x that will give us three distinct roots. Okay, now, looking at this, we don't even know what this is going to do for us, but we know what f of x is. We know that f of x is this guy, okay? And we can generate, remember we're trying to solve for x now, right? Okay, now in order to find x, we'll have to split this into f of x is minus 3 plus this, or minus 3 minus this. So we're going to have two quadratic equations in terms of x and c. And each of them is supposed to give us two solutions. Well, maybe. But in order to satisfy this condition, one of them has to be a bounce, and the other has to give us two solutions. Okay? So we're interested in the one that gives us a bounce. So we don't know if we should pick the plus or the minus, but it doesn't matter. Let me tell you why. x squared plus 6x plus c will be equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus c. If we move everything over here, we end up with x squared plus 6x plus c move this here, it's going to be plus 3, move this here, it becomes minus plus square root of 9 minus c equals 0. Should we take plus or minus? Well, it doesn't matter. You're going to see how it doesn't matter because when we square both sides to get rid of the square root sign, the plus or minus will disappear. Let's get rid of this. So remember that we are actually interested in when we're going to get one root. We don't want two roots because two roots then is going to give us four distinct solutions. We want the one that gives us one so that we can have three distinct solutions. So we want the bounds for what value of x are we going to get a bounds, okay? A bounds only happens when the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is 0. This is the only time you will get one real root. 
that is with a multiplicity of 2 for a quadratic. So that's what we're going to do here. The only time we will get, we're going to get a bounce here is if b squared minus 4ac equals 0, like this. So what is b squared for this quadratic? Well, notice that all of this is our c, right? So our b squared is going to be 6 squared. Here, you can see that b squared equals 4ac, clearly, from this equation. So our 6 squared will be equal to 4 times a, which is 1, times c. Let's write c as c plus 3 minus plus square root of 9 minus c. Okay, this is 36. I'm going to write 36. So now we can divide both sides by 4. And then we get 9 equals c plus 3 minus plus square root of 9 minus c. If we move these two here, we're going to have 9 minus 3 is 6. And there's going to be c. 6 minus c equals minus plus the square root of 9 minus c. And then we can square both sides. 36 minus 12c plus c squared equals, if you square this, the minus or plus doesn't matter anymore. We just have 9 minus c. If we pull everything to the side and make a quadratic equation in terms of c, we're going to have c squared um, minus 11c. Um, that's going to be plus 27 equals 0. Can we factor this? 9 times 3, oh, this is not 12. So this cannot be factored. So all we have to do is use the quadratic formula again, because now we're looking for C, right? So C must be minus B, which is 11 plus or minus the square root of B squared. That's 121 minus 4 times A times C. So that's 4 times 1 times this is going to be 54 times 2 is going to be 108. So 108 divided by 2, 2a, which is equal to, if we simplify this, 121 minus 108 is 13. So that's going to be 11 plus or minus square root of 13 divided by 2. Now, at this stage, there is this temptation to assume that you're done, but I realized that I had just solved a radical equation. Anytime you square both sides, you must always look out for extraneous solutions. Then I knew maybe one of my answers would not be appropriate for what I was doing. So I took 11 plus the square root of 13 over 2, which is one option, and I plugged it back into this equation and both sides did not match. Now, in the competition, I wonder how you're going to be aware of that, but you should be aware of it if you solve it this way. But when I tried 11 minus the square root of 13 over 2, it fit perfectly. So I came to the conclusion that there's only one answer because the 11 plus square root of 13 over 2 didn't fit. 11 plus square root of 13 over 2 is an extraneous solution. Therefore, C equals 11 minus the square root of 13 over 2. This is the answer that worked. And I decided to go on Desmos and graphed it. And this was what I got. So the negative version gave me the right answer, the right graph. The positive version did not give me what I was looking for. I was looking for three real roots. It only gave me one double root. So that wasn't my answer. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.